<clears throat> Thank you. I'd like now to call to the stage uh, California State Senator Mark Weiland. Uh, he represents nearly one million people in the San Diego area, including several Indian tribes. He's a businessman and a great representative of his people and his district. Uh, so please, a uh, warm welcome for Senator Mark Weiland. Question. I'll let I'll let you handle well, that. Actually, um, go ahead. What we'd like to do, if it's all right, um, is to finish the other part of the presentation from the Republican campaign, and then we could go to um, a, a short amount of uh, questions. We are running a little slightly behind, but can we do that? Just finish the next speaker, um, Dottie, and then we could get to the. Would that be okay? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I'm happy to take questions. I think that young man uh, deserves an A, A-plus on that paper. Uh, it was beautifully done. Uh, it's a, a real honor uh, to speak to you here at NCAI. This is really the first time I've gotten to know about your organization, although, as Kilma said, uh, representing an area in Southern California where I do, I've, I've had lots of exposure to various tribes. Um, and before I get into some of these other economic issues I'd like to talk about, I just want to make sure that it's really clear where Governor Romney stands uh, on uh, most tribal issues. Uh, the major issues that you're concerned about, sovereignty, understanding that uh, the federal government needs to take into account in a very collaborative process uh, the local government uh, of each tribe and that although many of you share common uh, views as in sovereignty, uh, he understands uh, that every tribe is unique and he wants to work to make um, to make all those issues better so there's a better result so tribes are more prosperous uh, and, and doing better. Um, and now I'd like to tell you a story. Uh, and the story really leads into what I want to say about economics and prosperity and how it relates to the tribes. And the story is about Pine Tree Lumber Company. And that was a family business that was started uh, by my grandfather, my dad, and my uncle after World War II. And we sold lumber and building materials in Escondido, actually supplied materials to several of the tribes who are represented here today. And that was a business like a lot of family businesses that uh, we worked hard in. My cousin and I worked there every summer. Uh, we loaded and unloaded lumber and delivered lumber to job sites. Uh, we did all the things that had to be done. And uh, it was pretty hard sometimes out there in the heat. And a lot of our friends had jobs where it was air conditioned and we were pretty envious. But because we were the owner's kids, our dads made it really clear. We had to work at least as hard, if not harder, than everyone else. Or we would have been in real trouble with them. But you know, when I look back on that experience, I gained so much, partly because it was hard work, partly because it was uh, work out there uh, in the sun, and I learned to respect every other person I worked with and every, other, every job we had. So a few years later, when my cousin and I managed the company, it helped that we had done every single one of these jobs. And we were really fortunate because most of the time, over the 20 years that, that we ran the company, times were good. And I know those of you who've seen those situations, and some of the gaming tribes have been very fortunate that way, it's really a wonderful experience and it's fun. You're hiring more people, you're growing, you're able to pay people well, you can give them bonuses. It's just, it's exciting. A lot's going on. 
And most of the time that that was happening, our business was growing. And it grew, and I'll talk more about that later, by us putting our profits and money back into it. We had been taught early on that you put it back in. You don't take it out. But there were a couple of times, because construction is cyclical, where things were tougher, especially in the early 90s in California where the defense industry collapsed, and California in particular had a rough time. And you all know how tough it is to lay someone off if you don't have the work, and yet you have to. And I can remember my cousin and I would, would look at how things were going, and you see a month, and you see business declining, and you're starting to lose money. And you say, you know, maybe it'll turn around. And there's another month where you're losing money. And you, you don't want to lay people off. Because in a smaller business, you know these people. Often you know their families. And there were a couple of times where it got to a point where we had to do that. It was very painful. And I can still remember those situations. And I remember how tough it is if you talk to a pretty tough guy who's done a good job and you say, you know, you've done a really good job for us for years. And it's really tough, but I, we just don't have the work. And when you see the tears start to well up, and he says, Mr. Wyland, I, I don't know if I can get another job, and I'm not sure how I can feed my family. You don't want to ever repeat that after you've gone through that. But we were lucky, as I say, and we didn't have many times like that. Most of the times were the boom times, and we had real boom times uh, until a few years ago. And that leads me to the problems that we've had in this economy, which you all know, uh, in the last few years. And we can cite statistics. I can cite, and they're pretty bad. I mean, you know, the number of people on food stamps has grown by 50%. I mean, the number is incredible. I actually wrote it down because it's, it's hard to believe. 47 million people. 23 million unemployed. I can cite the number, but I know each and every one of you who's gone through that, yourselves, your own business, family, friends, you know that it's personal. And you know what it does to families. You know how tough it is. Um, and it affects the entire family, sometimes an entire community. Well, I'm here representing Governor Romney, but I actually don't think this is a, a partisan issue. I'm a guy who used to be a Democrat for 20 years, and uh, when I came up here, I, my goal was and has been to make life better for, for everybody, for all my constituents. But I think the president simply, he hasn't wanted this to happen. He's wanted it to be better, but I think he just hasn't had the experiences that have taught him how to do that. And that's unfortunate, because no one wants that. I can tell you from dealing with a lot of politicians, no politician wants that. You actually, most of us, as bad a rap as we get, are pretty idealistic, and that's why we go into this. Now, there needs to be a solution to this, and that's where my support of Mitt Romney comes in. And, and I think it's less partisan than especially in the case that we face now, than it is about what's best for America and what's best for the tribes. Because in those good times, uh, the fortunate gaming tribes know your business is better, and I've talked to a lot of them. Business is off. When gasoline costs double what it cost before, when people aren't making as much, they're less likely to come out and visit. And there's less revenue. I mean, it's very clear, and Pre uh, Governor Romney, I hope President Romney, understands and believes this, that we need to make investments in education and health care and all those sorts of things, and there are lots of tribes who need some of that help. 
Well, when total revenue is down, it's harder, and it begins to crowd out the investments that you want to make. Now, in this campaign battle, the president has done something, and then I want to talk specifically about the solutions and how I know they would work from my own experience. The president has done something that politicians do. He said, well, Mitt Romney says he has a five-point plan. It's a one-point plan. This one-point plan is big tax breaks for millionaires and billionaires, you know, those guys on Wall Street. And I understand that completely. I mean, that's what we do. I'm not blaming him for that campaign rhetoric. That's what, that's what we do in campaigns, the rough and tumble. But the reality is, and what Romney understands is, if this is the economy, Wall Street's this little tiny part right here. The solution, which he understands, is on Main Street. It's not on Wall Street. And that's why he talks a lot about smaller businesses. Now, the president says his, his plan helps 97% of small businesses, that's true. Those are very small businesses and they're important. But the businesses like Pine Tree Lumber, like my business, that 3%, provide 50% of all the jobs in small business and a quarter of all the jobs in the country. And those are the jobs that create the revenue for the government to do the things they want to do and reduce the deficit. Those are the jobs that create more economic activity for the gaming tribes, which by the way, I think you all know, but are also, in addition to the jobs they provide, have been extremely generous to the community, and, and it's very appreciated. Those jobs are the jobs that come out of Main Street and smaller businesses. Now, I just want to talk about a couple of them. The, the five steps are energy independence, um, we could expand a lot on that, but I think you all know what that means. A huge amount of our oil is imported with as dangerous as it is in the Middle East if things went really south, which it could happen with Iran and nuclear weapons, and we didn't have that oil, we'd be in a depression like you can't imagine. So that's crucial. And he understands that we have the natural resources, and he also understands that you need to be sensitive to the environment. Sometimes Republicans get a, a bad rap on this. I'll tell you, I've been a member of almost every environmental organization, and he certainly understands we have to be responsive to that, and he certainly understands where that involves the tribes, you have to be responsive. Uh, he understands you have to expand international trade. He understands we have to improve education. All of you are dealing that with your young people. In Massachusetts, he achieved the top results in the country. Uh, in a short time um, in math and reading, and he knows we have to control spending because if we don't do that, the things we really want to spend money on get crowded out. And I'd like to take a minute here to talk about the tax reform part because this part gets caught in, you know, the, the back and forth. You know, he wants to just do stuff for the rich people and reduce their taxes and, and uh, not for the middle class. Well, not only has he said, and you can do this, uh, you can reform taxes so the very top, who don't need help, which he understands, they're not the ones affected by gas prices, pay exactly the same amount of revenue. But he understands you have to have a tax policy which helps those smaller businesses. And I can tell you from personal experience right there at Pine Tree, there was a point there where the top rate was 70%. I was still really young then. I still remember my dad and uncle saying, forget it, we're reducing business. If we have to lay off people, we have to do it. We're not paying 70%. Well, as times changed in the 80s and those rates went down, our business flourished and we poured money back into it. Because I want to make this, you know, the way it really is. So if we're in the lumber business, we got to buy more trucks and small businesses can't borrow a lot of money, they're small. So how are we going to do that? We're going to keep money back there in the business. We're going to buy more forklifts. We're going to buy more inventory. That's how we grew. That's how we were taught. And that's why 
that policy ultimately brings more prosperity. And that prosperity really does lift everyone. And that's the message I'd like to leave you with. That's my own personal experience. I've seen it. I've seen it improve the lives of the people who worked with us. I've seen it improve their families' lives. And I've seen those specific policies actually create that. So we paid a lot more dollars in taxes when the rates were lower because we were booming. So I think this, this election is not as much about which party as about solving really big problems this country hasn't faced, uh, hasn't faced in a long, long time. And that's why I think in this case, even though the president has really tried hard, Governor Romney would help all of us, every single one, every tribe, every single one of you, in all those ways. So I appreciate very much the opportunity to speak with you. I, I love working with the tribes. Uh, I appreciate what you're doing, and uh, uh, it's a real pleasure to speak. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I want to give you a gift. I'm not sure the question is going to be for you or for okay. Filma. Either is way. Down there? This is for you. Thank you. Can we have a question? Uh, uh, we have a question. I wasn't sure where. Was it for Kilma or, or is it for Wayland? Wayland. Just. I got a Dottie. question for you. Dottie to the party. Either okay, one. Okay, Ed, you want to start? Dottie's yeah. making her way up. Right here. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Dottie, yeah. can you ask your one question? If there are, I'm going to ask them to come to this side, and so you can have a further discussion with them, because we do have another question. But go ahead and shoot. Okay, um, I'm a Kai Indian from the Northwest Coast. My tribe owns the fourth corner, and so we pay taxes. Um, what I want to know is Mitt Romney, running for President of the United States, recognized that Native Americans are the ones that own this land, all of it, and that no matter, I travel all over. I don't want to pay tax nowhere because I am an Indian. And when I go to other tribes, I don't want to pay tax there. And I want them to stop the taxes on our ceded land. I want Romney to really think about what he is saying about taxes. They're not, they better not be just pretty words and um, looking, yeah. I need that um, I need that answer so that I can feel confident you know I never been a Republican I don't know how that feels <laughs> well I was I was both I never jumped I, I, I was both and it felt okay I never jumped canoes to get into another canoe and I want the taxes stopped for all people. Elders pay 10, on a 1099 form, we pay taxes for what we go and do to teach other people our Indian ways. So that's one of them, and I want to know about Bain. You know that Bain is what he did. Bain don't sound like a good thing to me, going in, tear down a company and uh, separate it all. If that is the way his heart is, that's not good. And I need to know about 47% interest. Pickle, pickle. Okay. Sure, I want, I, I want to be, I want to be uh, as responsive as I can. I'm not sure I understood, uh, could hear all the things about taxes. Um, I okay, think let me talk it's, it's, well, louder. No taxes. Not well, for no Indian tribe, individual, I, or nothing. We have to have Indian cards to go places to show that we're Indian. I'm sure that the white man doesn't have to show a card that he's a white man. I, I, I can assure you, this right. I can absolutely assure you, okay. that he understands sovereignty. He understands that very, very well. He understands the unique relationship 
government to government, and there will never be an attempt to impose taxation. That's not part of the deal. I want it stopped now. I don't want to pay gas tax down here. I don't mind paying taxes well, on reservations, but I don't. I'm sick and tired of it. No taxes, none. Not for no Indian. We own this land. Okay, they're, they're telling me we're out of time. I'm happy. I, I, I don't want to be non-responsive. I, 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 I don't want to be non-responsive. I, I, I really don't. So I, I do want to talk to you, but just in, in quickly. You mean? Uh, if there's a tax issue now yeah. that exists now, yes. I can absolutely guarantee you that he will look at that and try to solve that because he does understand sovereignty. He does absolutely understand that. No. On the second issue, I think, was the 47 percent. Yes. Look, I can tell you, I've done it, Democrats have done it, everyone does it. Sometimes you must speak in a group, and he clearly misspoke. He said something that he agrees he, sh he didn't want to say. We understand that you can't make this country work unless it works for everybody. It won't work. You just can't do it. You can't. That's why I was talking about Wall Street versus Main Street. You can't. Wall Street is not the country. Main Street's the country. And the, the part about Bain, uh, we can talk some more about that. But, but the business that he was in, and I can tell you how painful it can be, was in investing in companies that usually were on the verge of bankruptcy. Not all of them, but on the verge of bankruptcy or ones that were just starting, and most of those don't make it. That's why they call it venture. It's kind of an adventure. So some of them, it's true, didn't make it. Some of them were very successful. Some of them that didn't make it, at least they were able to keep them in business longer. So anyway, I, I appreciate that. But I'm he happy got to talk money to off the top before they went bankrupt. I I'm, studied I'm, Bain. Well, I can, I can guarantee you that he cannot do what he's talking about without increasing jobs dramatically. That's his entire platform, and I can tell you from personal experience in my own business, it's on. It, it works. I've seen it. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. You tell, yeah. I'm, I'm a politician. I can keep going. It's, these guys have to pull the hook. I, I, I appreciate you being here, and I, I, uh, I, I watched the polls, so I know i got to be nice to you because President, I mean, Romney has a good chance of getting elected. But one of, one of the points I want to make uh, has to deal with your most uh, talked about point, and that is of taxes. Uh, the Bush tax cuts went in in 2001. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most uh, looked at economic indicator, which is the uh, Dow Jones, uh, was at the same level in 2011 as it was in 2001. And so there really is no historical co correlation between tax cuts and the economic uh, health of this country. There's absolutely no correlation. And yet we keep talking about as though uh, when we have these tax breaks, we're gonna have all kinds of jobs. Well, it didn't happen. The unemployment went up instead of going down. And so why do we want to relive that uh, 11 years of, of having tax breaks? And uh, you talked about small business, we really need to support small business, and I generally agree. But it's the big businesses that left our country. Yeah. Our computers are not made in this country anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the cars are brought in from overseas. And those are where the jobs really have been siphoned off the top and, and sent overseas by the rich people in this world, in this country. And they even send their money overseas. So I'm not sure where we're going with this. Well, uh, I'd really like to uh, answer both of those. I think in terms, I'll start with the uh, last one first about jobs going overseas. Uh, it does depend, some definitely have. Here in California, and this is our problem, this is a problem I would have liked to ask the governor we have Intel, and you all know Intel because they're powering a lot of your computers. They've invested billions of dollars, thousands of jobs in Oregon, Arizona, and New Mexico. And what they'll say is they want to be in this country for all sorts of technical reasons, <clears throat> but they can't be in California. 
So, and that's tax, partly, because we are the, one of the few states that tax manufacturing equipment, and they do hundreds of millions of that, and it's regulatory stuff. So, and in terms of, of uh, those businesses uh, going overseas, and particularly China, where a lot of these are built, uh, Romney is the first one. And, and I want to get back to this. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about him as a person because I think this is an election which, you know, everyone's trying to do their best job. I mean, Obama has tried to do his best job. There's no doubt in my mind. But Romney's the first president, presidential candidate I've seen in my lifetime Republican or Democrat, I'm throwing the Republicans in with this, who says China, and let's pick them because they're the biggest, is trading unfairly, they're manipulating their currency, which makes their products cheaper, they're not, they're stealing our secrets. I mean, this is rampant, and no one's ever done anything about it. It's been personally upsetting to me because I've seen those jobs go overseas. Now, on the, on the tax issue and the stock market, I absolutely agree with you that the stock market is not an indicator, I don't believe, of the health of the economy. I, I do, I'm not saying there's a relationship between... The economic indicator. I, I, I understand. Let, let, me, let me just... Let me, hear me out. Hear me out. Uh, and this, again, is based on my personal, my personal experience for 20 years. Um, at a, you know, this wasn't a big fancy Wall Street company. It was lumberyard right there in Escondido. Uh, the stock market made no difference. If it did, with a high stock market now, we wouldn't have 23 million people unemployed and 47 on food stamps, a million on food stamps, and we wouldn't have the problem with the revenue. So the thing I would say there is, yeah, we look at the stock market, and if people have a 401k, look at it, and it matters. But I, I don't think the stock market is the health of the economy. What I experienced, and I realize there are different views, I realize this, what I experienced in my own company was when the lower the rates were and the more positive attitude there was towards business, we did better. We put, we paid, actually paid more taxes. That was, that was our direct experience. So anyway, I, I, I'll keep, has a question. I'll keep going. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, my name is Fawn Sharp. I'm uh, president of the Quinault Nation. I also represent the affiliated tribes of the Northwest Indians. Uh, we appreciate the remarks about self-empowering, uh, self-reliance for tribes and the private sector. We have private sector economies we're trying to develop at home. We also try to incentivize outside companies to locate, uh, leveraging private sector investment through housing tax credits and those sort of mechanisms. But the one issue that we cannot seem to get the attention of, of anyone is the fact that we have the Internal Revenue Service, state and local governments, unilaterally, unconstitutionally, and illegally taxing within our territories and boundaries. We have elders, we have grandmothers who do cultural things, and they get taxed by the IRS. And so there are billions of dollars in our tribal economies that are going outside with no one stopping uh, that level of taxation and in intrusion into our sovereign borders. So uh, what is the uh, Romney position on taxation of state, local governments, as well as the Internal Revenue Service in our, our sovereign lands? Well, yeah, I, I don't know if they've developed a policy as specific as I didn't know this was happening. And I'd actually like to talk to you more about it because I want to understand it. But I, what I can tell you is he understands, understands and respects sovereignty and the government-to-government -government relationship. I can also tell you that uh, from my own personal experience, I want there to be fair taxation when a tax should be applied, and this sounds like it shouldn't be. I'm actually, after this, running for our, our state in California. We have a, a board called the Board of Equalization right. that deals with state tax issues. Uh, I want to get on that because I had to deal with them when I was in business. I thought they were a huge bureaucracy, didn't treat us very fairly. One of the issues they would always look at, incidentally, because we did a lot of business with the tribes, they would go down into every invoice and, you know, if, if you ship something, we would have had history, if we ship something to a tribal member, happened to be a contractor, but it wasn't delivered, this may be analogous to what you're saying, but it wasn't delivered to the reservation. By an Indian. 
yeah, we, we shouldn't, we didn't think we should have to pay sales tax. He was a tribal member. He was taken to the reservation. That's where he was going to use it. So, but what you're talking about and was brought up earlier, I, I'm not as familiar with, with that. I'd like to learn more about that. Okay. And I, I can just tell you that he, he believes in sovereignty and, and we would look, we want to make sure that the taxation of the tribes is fair. Okay. We need to wrap it up. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay. I, I, really, I really appreciate it.